Good evening and welcome to Hemfield Happenings. I'm Kayla Torres. And I'm Manny Picciani. This month, we will be featuring the boys basketball team's successful season. Hemfield's annual college sports signing day. And a studio interview with Dr. Adams, the newly elected superintendent for the 2015-2016 school year. So stay tuned. This is Hemfield Happenings. As we welcome the warm weather and the beginning of spring, we also welcome Dr. Adams, the newly elected superintendent. Today I'm joined by Hemfield's current assistant superintendent, Dr. Adams, who will be taking over as the new head superintendent at the beginning of the 2015 to 2016 school year. Dr. Adams, it's so nice to have you here. Thank Thanks, you Katie. so Thanks much for, for your me. time. I just wanted to start off by asking what some of the main responsibilities of the superintendent are. Well, the superintendent's really responsible for overseeing all aspects of running the school system. Uh, they, they work with uh, the assistant superintendent and a bunch of people at the district office level and principals to make sure students are receiving the best possible education they can. Um, and then also works with people on the operational side of the organization to make sure that uh, we're able to provide opportunities and safe, clean uh, facilities and food services, transportation, all those things that surround the provision of education, that those are done with high quality uh, uh, work as well. So I understand that you have a background in education. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, I started my teaching career in upstate New York where I taught uh, science for eight years and did a lot of coaching. Uh, I moved to Lancaster in 1992 and uh, taught science at uh, Townships Middle School for five years. I was an assistant principal at the high school for five years and then was actually middle school principal uh, there for five years. I came over to Hempfield in 2007 where I was actually the principal of this building for one year and I've been in the district office uh, as an assistant superintendent for the past seven years. Thank you. Um, I was wondering how you plan to establish priorities and goals to move the school district forward in the next year. Sure. We're going to start with the newly approved uh, three-year district comprehensive plan. Helps us outline uh, some real priorities around making sure that uh, the curricular experiences that our students are having are, are really well aligned to state standards and are rigorous, relevant to students' lives and engaging. Uh, that our practices, instructional practices in the classroom are meeting the needs of, of an increasingly diverse student body. Um, that we have a nice, well-rounded, comprehensive framework of supports for, to surround and assist students who may need additional um, support beyond the classroom. Uh, that we're communicating as effectively within the organization as we can and also reaching out and being the best partners with our family and community as we can be. And that we're also providing the professional development opportunities that are important uh, and needed by our staff to continue to learn and grow and provide high level service to our students. The other piece about priorities is in April and June I'll be going out to do some listening. Uh, talking to students, talking to staff, parents, community members, to make sure that I'm listening and learning anything that I don't believe I already understand about the school system so that we can continue to move the district forward. So as we wrap things up for today, I was wondering what some of your favorite things about Hemfield School District are. I love the people that I've come in contact with here. Great students, really rich, uh, richly diverse student body. We have wonderfully committed and hardworking teachers. We've got a really committed and supportive school board. Wonderfully uh, involved and, and supportive parents and community. Um, that's a great starting point. We have great facilities, 
we have a tradition of excellence that I really appreciate at Hempfield. And people around here operate from a growth mindset, and I think that's what it really needs to be about. You know, it's not only what we're doing well, but what can we continue to do better to make sure students get the highest level of service we can provide. Thank you so much again for your time. It was so nice to You're have you here. You're most welcome. Thanks, Katie. And congratulations. Thank you very much. Another recent change in the Hempfield administration is the resignation of Mr. Bill Jimenez from his school board position, being replaced by Mr. Bill Otto. Recently, there have been some big changes to Hempfield School Board. The former president, Mr. Jimenez, has resigned. I was on the school board over seven years, and then I was lucky enough to be the school board president for four years. By law, to be on a local school board, you have to live within the school district's boundaries. So I just moved out. Seven years was a, a good stead, and I only joined the board after I had lived in the community for quite a while. So I think it's important for someone to live in a community before they serve. I am the president of the Hemfield School Board. The, the three key things that a board is charged with is the hiring, and evaluation of a superintendent, setting of all of the school policies, and managing the school in a fiscally responsible manner, consistent with the highest level of education that we can provide. I'm still connected and I still uh, will follow everything that goes on in that field. And honestly, as a principal in another school district, I always admire what Dr. Stout does at the building, so I'm always trying to keep up with him. Dr. Becker was such a great person to work with and good leader, and all the board members were really uh, dedicated people. Over the past seven years, Mr. Jimenez has left a lasting influence on the Hempfield School Board, making key decisions for the district. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Ben Hogan. Starting in the fall, the one-to-one -one initiative will begin here at Hempfield High School. Luke Mondock got students and teachers' opinions on this district change. The one-to-one -one program recently passed at Hemfield, meaning each student will receive one piece of technology. I went around Hemfield to get opinions on the program. Uh, I think the one-to-one -one program is a good idea because it gives students new technology to work with. All the children can get access to computers and be able to do their homework and essays and stuff like that. Um, and they don't have to go to the library or go anywhere else. I'm relatively positive towards the one-to-one -one initiative. I think technology is something that is coming, whether we like it or not. Um, even students nowadays, you see them with their iPads, their computers, their phones, and I feel as if it's becoming a battle with students to try and get them to put the technology away. But I think if we can spin the technology to become more educational, I feel as if it could be something that we could use as teachers to our benefit. Um, it could make cut some of the educational processes more streamlined. We don't have to worry about textbooks nearly as much. But as with any initiative of this size, it's still going to have its issues as well. Some of these issues with the one-to-one -one program are being exploited by a strong minority opposition group. can cause students, I feel, to not necessarily learn responsibility because as a young child, they are given an expensive device. And I feel that they're not necessarily ready responsible or responsible enough to have the device at that age. Um, I mean, I still drop my phone and I'm 18. I feel like I, giving a, a 10 year old child a $500 iPad and asking them to take it to school every day is kind of asking for trouble. So whether you're strongly against it or in favor of it, the one to one program is here to stay. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Luke Mondock. Farmdale Elementary has a program that benefits the families in the community. Farmdale Elementary School is championing the Power Packs program this year. One of their key partners, the Hempfield Rec Center, is integral in the distribution process. What Power Packs is about is providing food, a meal, for families. They're given a recipe and all the ingredients needed to provide to make the meal. And they're encouraged as a family to, to cook the meal together. There was a need in the city schools. One of the teachers had students coming in on Monday morning, starving, hungry. They hadn't eaten over the weekend. They were part of the free lunch program at school. We have children that come to school who are hungry every day. So we worry about our families when children go home on the weekend and their cupboards may not be as full as yours or mine. 
Power Packs is not a handout. It's a help up. When you have children who are well fed, they can concentrate and do much better in school. Usually you see the children's faces light up when they see what some of the items are in the backs. You know, sometimes when we were in the city, if they saw apples, they got so excited about having an apple and that the apple was out of the bag and they were eating it before they even left the building after they picked it up. I think it's important. The three of us are here every week and um, we're consistent. We're, we're the faces that the families recognize when they come in. And so we do start to build a relationship with them and make a connection with them. It, it's just a, a great value for us. When you're doing anything to help other people, I think it's human nature that personal satisfaction is a piece of that. It's um, a service that the community uh, will value if we're able to do that at other schools. And I know we have a lot of volunteers um, who, who really give of their time, and sometimes in inconvenient times, just because they value it so much and they value the service that they're uh, performing for the community. What we do is then order the food from the, the, the food bank and they deliver it here and we store it here. We need volunteers to um, come in and inventory the food. Then we have the school district comes in and they put that food away, inventory it, uh, make sure that we received everything that we need. The parents come pick their children up after school and they um, pick up their power tax programs also. You know, when a lot of people look at Hempfield as a district, I just, I'm not sure they're aware of our level of need that some of our students are coming in to, um, to our schools with. Uh, it's just great seeing the families come in. Every Thursday they start showing up about quarter to four and you know, they wave to you when they come in and they say thank you as they're signing out and the kids hear about it and, and the kids get excited about the different food that comes um, each week and uh, different recipes that they get to try. So, And our volunteers that um, are helping with the distribution are so friendly and you know caring um, so they've developed relationships with these families as well. The children that feel good about themselves succeed. The ones that don't really struggle I think um, to find a place where they fit in. And I think Power Packs is, is looking not just to feed them but to educate them to nourish them with information and food. Some people might say in Hemfield we don't have that need, but I would say that yes we do. There are families that have lost jobs, there are families that have single parent families, moms trying to raise their children alone, and um, they're struggling to make ends meet. And um, to have a program that supplements their food budget and helps them is a good thing. And Hemfield does really have that need. Because of the retired teachers at Farmdale, the volunteers at the rec center, and so many others involved, the Power Packs program is up and running, helping district families in need. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Duncan Brady. That's it. The development of Lime Spring in Roystown is causing some changes in the community. Laurel Murr spoke with local residents about the impact. Many Roystown parents thought Knoll Road only led to the elementary school. However, because of the new Lime Spring development, it now leads all the way to Running Pump. What East Hempfield Township does is anytime a developer wants to put a development in, they have them come and talk to us to the district so that they understand the impact. And really, we knew this development was coming before we did the elementary realignment. The first phase, as the township directed the developers, they wanted to get Knoll Road open through. The Roarstown Road, Marietta Avenue intersection is the worst intersection in the entire county as far as wait times. That improvement of open and no road is a huge help with that traffic in the area. So right before the Christmas break, they had finished the road and we started talking about, okay, parents have always seen that as a dead end. It's not a dead end any longer. And what we did is we made the parent drop-off loop, we made it a one-way loop the whole way around. We made uh, a double stack of cars through most of that loop, and so that way uh, we can get 55 to 60 cars in that loop and not be on Knoll Road. Although extending Knoll Road can be a great help to traffic, some residents near the intersection don't want the flow of cars in their neighborhood. Whenever Roarstown Light gets backed up, people cut through our neighborhood, and they don't care that we're walking our dogs or there's no sidewalks. Our, our little town is from the early 1700s, and our roads aren't built properly. They're, 
dirt roads, macadamed, then macadam over. The traffic is just crazy. And it's only going to get worse if you keep developing it. And their attitude is, well, if we open up the neighborhoods, that'll take some of the pressure off of Roarstown Road. Well, who wants people driving through their neighborhood? This is not a main road. I don't want to take the pressure off of Roarstown Road. The open land that is now being used for the Lime Spring development will also be greatly missed. My children grew up playing over there, and we loved it. It could have been land for soccer and walking and um, all kinds of activities, acres and acres and acres. We would walk there after dinner. It was just lovely. All kinds of tales of, of fun. You know, it was a magical land. However, the developers are going to make sure that the neighborhood still has a safe and welcoming environment. We also worked with the developer and made sure that along the front of the school, there are sidewalks that come the whole way from the development into the school, and there actually be a walkway from the back of the development back to the school. So it's going to be a nice walking community. Anytime anything changes, there's always you know, some impact that's going to be there. And anything that we can do to help that 741 Marietta Avenue interchange, that's going to only help everybody. The new Lime Spring development has brought many changes to the Roarstown community. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Laurel Murr. Recently, the senior athletes participated in Hempfield's annual signing day. However, you don't have to be a senior to commit to a school. When you think of the Performing Arts Center, you may think of a theatrical event. However, some senior athletes got to try out the stage for themselves. Let's take a look. The first Wednesday in February is the National Letter of Intent Signing Day, which that's the day where many of the athletes can sign their letter of intent in order to, to play a sport and continue their education at the next level. This year there was a change made on who could actually participate in the event. What we did on Wednesday, February 4th, is we just recognized not only Division I and Division II students, but we also recognized any student who, who was going to play Division III athletics. Our parents are fantastic. They come out, they support in every way possible. I'm attending McDaniel College next fall and I'll be playing soccer there and it's D3. This many different sports represented at the number of colleges and universities. It was just a nice day of recognition uh, for the senior athletes because they work hard and it shows the success that we have here at Hempfield not only with academics but also with athletics. I'm going to Emory University and it's a Division III school and I'm playing volleyball. Some students discussed how Hempfield has prepared them for the collegiate level. I think we have really good coaching staff and a lot of people help out with the athletic program. Academically, I've taken courses that I know would prepare me for school and I feel like the teachers the faculty have done a really great job and athletically I've had a great experience with the volleyball program. We've been in the state finals every year that I've been at Hemfield. So it's, it's cool to go from such a successful high school program into a successful collegiate program and I think I'm ready. Congratulations to all the senior athletes for your achievements here at Hemfield High School. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Christopher Lynch. Now here's Kylie. A field hockey goalie needs more than just shin guards and a mouth guard during a game. Playing this position on the field has helped junior Holland Barr to get recognized by D1 colleges. What we found out with goalies is because there's only two on a team that you have to be in the right rotation for that school. So not only do you have to pick the right school, you have to pick the right college that are looking for a goalie for the year that you're graduating. I went down to camp for the summer and after the camp the coach talked to me and basically it was like we have a spot on our team for you and I accepted it. Well, she always gives me good criticism, like good advice. It, like whenever I'm not comfortable in a position, she'll tell me what to do when I don't know what to do. And because she's that back, she's like the goalie, so she sees everything and she tells me what to do from there. And she's pretty good at that. It felt pretty good to finally know where I was going and to be able to like just having the feeling that I was gonna be playing Division One. I. I think it's a good fit for her. Academically, it's fit. It's good. There's so much that can offer her there. Like there's so much opportunity there and I think she's gonna do so great. Like it's a great place for her. A lot of it has to do with luck. You know, the coaches seeing you play at you know some of the big tournaments and some of it is just getting seen by the right people at the right time. 
Good timing is a crucial aspect for great opportunities. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Kylie Schaefer. This past winter, the boys basketball team had an amazing season. Christopher Detweiler gives us more information. Win on three, ready, one, two, three. Let's go. The Hempfield boys basketball team capped off a great season in the district playoffs. Coach Walk elaborated on the team's successful season. The season was uh, an exciting season. I think uh, anybody that saw our brand of basketball had to be pretty excited about how hard uh, the team played, how together they played. And uh, I think it was, along with being exciting, it was a lot of fun for the players. Well, we had a pretty good season this year. I don't know what our exact record was, but we had a great number of milestones. Probably did more than what we expected to do. And Overall, had a good season. Here we go! Five special! Five special! A big part of the team's success is the student support. They were great this year. It was, it's very important because without them, the game would be quiet and it needs some energy to get us going and just helps out big time. The student section this year was really solid compared to the last couple of years. I feel like they were more involved um, and just at the games they seem to be more involved as well. It just, it's, it, it's an extra element that helps to, uh, uh, to motivate, excite. Uh, everybody likes to play in front of their, their peers and their friends and when they're loud and proud and they do it the right way, it's real exciting. I'm just real grateful for the fact that they came out. Uh, I think it's like the sixth man on our team. Dylan Bleacher's teammates were proud of his great accomplishment. It was great to see him get his thousand. He really deserved it. With Dylan's thousand point uh, plateau that he hit, uh, it was quite an accomplishment. When I look at those, those types of accomplishments, it's his individual skill, along with a lot of his uh, the the teammates that he played with. We had a great time on and off the court, and there's no team I'd rather play with. Congratulations to the Hempfield boys basketball team on a great season. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Christopher Detweiler. All right, Joey, it's your bye. let's go. Students in grades six through eight recently participated in the district-wide spelling bee. Francesca Barrett attended this event. Trendy means to be like a fad. On February 4th, the District Spelling Bee was held, where 30 contestants, grades 6 through 8, participated. Two 6th grade Warristown Elementary School students shared their climb to the top. Word? Okay. The crowd's a little bit scary, but you feel kind of special being a part of there. Slow. They take um, a pretest for our list for the week on Monday, and then they have four assignments that they have to do throughout the week. Um, any words they get wrong on the pretest, they have to rewrite five times. They have to put the words in alphabetical order, um, categorize the words by parts of speech, so like noun, verb, adjective, and then um, they need to find a synonym for each of the words. Right now, we are all admiringly looking at our ten finalists that will go on needing to spell nothing more. In the spelling bee, they can ask for like definitions or part of speech or to use it in a sentence. So having that background and maybe knowing and recognizing some patterns can help them in the spelling bee. The girls shared something they learned from the spelling bee. Be less scared of crowds, I guess. <laughs> then I'm smarter than I thought I was. Both Kristen Wyden and Greta Violent and eight other Hempfield students will move on to the championship spelling bee taking place in March. After winning at CMS, they learned that hard work and fun is easy to spell out. For H-E-M-P-F-I-E-S? H-E-M-P-F-I-E-L-D. Happenings, I'm Francesca Barrett. The students at East Petersburg Elementary School made Valentine's Day cards for children attending a local preschool which aids individuals with developmental needs. Students at East Petersburg Elementary School spread Valentine's Day cheer to younger kids with disabilities. 
we've tried to, as a school, really find opportunities to connect with our community. Extensio was one of the first community partners we reached out to and we've been working with them for the last two years uh, and each Valentine's Day we've made cards. The easiest way to explain Extensia, our tagline is empowering people with developmental needs and that's from birth to end of life. The students thought the preschoolers really enjoyed the experience. I think the kids feel actually pretty happy when, they're, when they saw us. I think one of them was like really excited because um, I saw like their like faces smiling. I think they felt happy because sometimes those are the only cards they get. Well, some of them were like really happy and they were like smiling and like they were like touching the cards and looking and looking at them. The students also learned important life lessons. I think it was great for them to see how valuable all all people are and how we can learn from. Them all abilities, so I think it was a good experience for them. To me, this was a true service learning project in which our entire school got involved. And we looked at it from some of the teaching we've done through our guidance program, which has really focused on um, understanding people and, and understanding that many people come with um, different needs and different strengths and, and, and beautiful elements. If there's any takeaway today, um, my children love the fact that they were able to put smiles on people's faces. St. Valentine would be proud of what these kids did this Valentine's Day. For Field Happenings, I'm Alex Weaver. That's all for this month. Next month, we will take a look at the Act 153 changes in the district and the Rachel's Challenge impact on Hemfield. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next month.